The climb to the twin radio masts of Roccacorba has become synonymous with Girona. At the top, magnificent views to Banyolas and beyond. But it's long and hard, with sustained stretches of over 10% gradient. You don't need to be a linguist to understand what this sign means, and it's oppressive can dank for 95% of the climb. Roccacorba, does the ride match the hype? Just before we turn our minds to that crucial question, a little reminder that if you subscribe to or like the channel, it's a great help. So thanks if you do. The lake at Banyolas is a great place either to prepare for or recover from the Roccacorba climb. This cafe with the jetty, the choicest spot. Saddle up and follow the signs towards Pujano. The official climb is 10 kilometers long with a height gain of 745 meters at an average gradient of 7.4%. But as Velo viewer shows, the softer first third means the steeper gradients are concentrated in the last two thirds. Here's where there are long stretches of double digit climbing. It's often said that a good time at Roccacorba is the same in minutes as your age in years. And that's not a bad guide unless you're in your early 20s. As the very few houses thin out and the road surface deteriorates, the meat of the climb begins. What many visitors may not realise is that Roccacorba is a road to nowhere. It exists only to service the radio masts and it's not maintained to the usual fantastic standards of Catalonian roads. One of the very few points of interest early on is a series of hairpins. You quickly gain elevation of the steep turns. The views are there, it's just you can't see them from the road. That said, there are two points where the elevation is sufficient and the tree cover relents when you do get a glimpse of your destination. There's a second hairpin section christened Crispin's Corner. If there is a story, only Crispin and his mates know it. And around here, another hat full of vertical meters is bagged pretty quickly. Getting closer now and a couple of K before the final dig, there's a very well hidden font where you can fill a bead on. Back into the trees and the last section is one of the toughest of the whole climb. The gradient is an unrelenting 10% or steeper for the final kilometre. The Rocker Cobra sign isn't the end, but it's pretty close. A final hairpin, a view revealed, the masts towering above. And once you see the rocky wall on your right, it's just a matter of 100 metres. The top isn't pretty. There's no cafe. There are no facilities of any kind. But there are views. Man, there are views. Is the ride worth the hype? My opinion, if you have only a short time in Girona, you can spend your time more wisely elsewhere. Here for a week? Well, you may feel you have to join the happy bands heading there and get Roccacorba ticked off. A good time up it? Well, that really does depend. The pros are going to shoot up it. 28 to 33 would be the range for the very, very fastest times. 
Mid-pack, somewhere between 45 and 49, is certainly respectable, but the ageing years and time in minutes formula is a pretty good one. If you're ambling up and stopping at the very few places where there are views, anything between 1 hour 10 and 1 hour 20 is a pretty good time. A little reminder that if you subscribe to or like the channel, it's a great help. So thanks if you do.